Hey guys, I'm just doing, gonna do a quick video um, about the vagus nerve and how we can do a very simple drill called the basic exercise to stimulate it uh, in order to create better outcomes in our ability to process stress and for our body to naturally fight inflammation and also upregulate the immune system. So the vagus nerve is one of the 12 paired cranial nerves. So they, um, all, most of them originate in, in the brain stem, so they have the uh, pons, medulla, and the midbrain. But the vagus nerve is cranial nerve 10, and it's named uh, the wandering nerve uh, due to its, uh, the length of its pathway and the amount of things that it does. So it starts in the medulla, which is in the, the bottom of the brain, so essentially the, the base of the brain or the top of the spinal cord. And it's, it has a functional control of the back of our throat, so the soft palate through our esophagus and trachea, and down into the lungs. So it's not all control of the lungs, so it has a, has a little bit of an um, action on our breath, uh, breath rate and the ability of our lungs to contract and relax. So the lungs, the heart, the stomach, um, the spleen, small intestine, uh, most of the large intestine, the liver, the gallbladder, the kidneys, and then also a few glands such as the thyroid and the adrenals. So it has a massive effect, not just from in the, in the brain, but down into our organ system. So the coolest thing though as well is that that's, that's its motor function, so that's only 20% of its function. So 20% of it, the vagus nerve's role is to provide a, a motor function, so a descending input into the body. And then the, the remainder, 80% of it, is actually, its function is to observe or essentially perceive everything that's happening in those organs and glands that it has control of. So it's really a sensory organ. So 80% of it is a afferent or sensory. Its role is to perceive what is happening. So the theory is, uh, is if the nerve is functioning well, then it can see what's happening inside the body and restore homeostasis a lot quicker. So, so it has a major role in, in regards to fighting off inflammation, but it also has a big role in um, regulating our mind. So in regards to regulating stress, so right now in the world there's a lot of panic, there's a lot of fear, understandably so, there's, you know, there's a lot of stuff out in the media and there's a lot of uncertainty uh, from a financial perspective and you know where am, what am I going to do where am I going to live what's going to happen and a lot of people are operating from their sort of lower brain structures and they're in this sort of either a freeze response or they're in a fight flight response so the freeze response really relates to the the rear uh, vagus nerve we call it the dorsal vagus nerve and that's more that vegetative part so that's part that uh, is uh, in control of observing and sensing the organs I was just talking about then. And then we have a more modern ventral or uh, front vagus nerve, and that is more linked to our social engagement system, so our ability to be calm under pressure and read facial cues and, and be um, in, in the ability to you know bond with others on a social and intimate level as well. So we want that nerve to be firing up uh, in, we want that. We want to be in that nerve state most of the time. So we want to be in a socially engaged state because if we are, we are going to downregulate both the fight flight response and that freeze response, which is going to bring us into a, a state where we can actually uh, have a calm mind and we can be alert, but we, we're not really aroused. So I'm going to show you an exercise called the basic exercise. Uh, it's, it really is really basic. It's a very very quick reset of the nerve and uh, it's essentially all it is is you're going to place your hands interlock them you're going to place them behind your occiput the back of your head so your, your your bottom finger index finger is just going to be resting underneath the the bulge of the back of the head your head's going to be still it's not going to move but your eyes are just going to shift off to the side and just have a soft gaze and so it's not a strained gaze it's just a soft gaze and then you're just going to wait there you're just going to leave your eyes in a static position so it's like an isometric hold of the eyes and you're going to wait for a vagus nerve response, which is what just happened then. I had a sigh. And so a vagus nerve response will either be a sigh, it will either be a yawn, big yawn, 
um, or it will be a swallow. So all three of those functions, uh, sigh, yawn or swallow, are signs that the vagus nerve is now um, functioning uh, more optimally. So you would do it with one side and then you would do it with the other side and you just wait and it can take up from one to two minutes sometimes depending on how um, functional or dysfunctional your vagus nerve is. I've done this quite a lot so I usually get the response quite quickly and you'll find some people are yawners, some people are, you know they'll swallow or some people uh, will sigh. I tend to sigh. Like my response is when I get that vagus response, I'll sigh. So doing that a few times a day will definitely improve your your ventral vagal, so your more modern vagus nerve, the socially engaged social engagement system, is ability to function, and it will just improve overall vagal function. Now, how does it work? Like, how does this and your eye position work? So, anatomically, the way it works is that. The movement of our eyes and the movement of the little muscles at the back of the neck called the suboccipital muscles are actually intrinsically linked together neurologically they're wired together by the by the uh, tectospinal tract and what happens is when we move the eyes those little muscles move and those little muscles at the back of the neck are attached to c1 the c1 which is the first vertebrae in the spine it's called the atlas and the vagus nerve actually has to pass through uh, the position of the atlas. So what's actually happening is when we just hold our eyes in one position over time that will actually reset tension in the back into the in the muscles of the back of the neck, the suboccipitals and if it resets to a, a better position then the atlas can now reset and if the atlas is in a better position then we'll have better nerve flow so that's where you'll get this response. So I mean the body is amazing it's got all the intelligence it needs, it's got all the technology it needs right within us, so that's just another quick and easy technique that you can do. The more times you do it, uh, the better the, the vagus nerve is gonna fire by itself. It's like training for the vagus nerve. So, um, really, really cool drill. If you have any questions, uh, just let me know. Uh, contraindications would be essentially, you know, if you had previous head trauma and you have issues with your eyes already, uh, I would either not do it, uh, be assessed by someone who can, who can uh, look at that sort of stuff or proceed with like caution. That's pretty much it. Most people should be able to do it, but just make sure when you're, um, when you're looking, it's, you're not straining, it's just a soft little focus. So even if, say for instance, if you go to here and it's too much, just bring it about halfway off. Try different angles too. So once you find it, like if it's not working here, then you can try up there or you can try down there. So let me know how you go, but it's, it's definitely one of the most powerful drills I use in my clinic for myself and also for my clients. So thanks guys.